Welcome to the space where creators have aligned a positive and intellectual collab of open minds. For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe. We give us a podcast on the mic. Subscribe, educators, spitting bars. I guess you didn't know, multifaceted and humble, taking off life goals. The classroom is my comfort zone where I plant and sow. Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy, and hope. Reading is the key to unlocking your potential. Countless benefits, including positive and mental. Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential. Go get yours, I'll get mine. Make you strive. Money mental. Come rock with me and get down to this new jam. Yeah. I with my friends, I had a very simple plan. Educate the masses through books and life lessons. It's a grand slam. I'm out. Tala Falava, Kia and welcome to the Reads of Rossa podcast. On today's show, we have a very special guest. He left Aotearoa, New Zealand uh, back in the day and moved to Japan straight out of high school to take up a rugby scholarship and study at university. Upon completing his qualifications, he continued to play club rugby and he even got the opportunity to play for the Japan Sevens team. Over the past few months, he has gained a huge following both here and abroad and received a lot of interest from the Japanese public after he appeared on the second season of The Bachelorette Japan. Welcome to the show, Jaden Tor Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what an introduction. I haven't, had one, I haven't had an English introduction like that in a, it's my first one, I think. Oh, my bad, bro. You know, you know, my Japanese is just not up to your fluency. No, you know, no, I get... no. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. That was my first, oh. first oh, English proper introduction. I liked it. I liked it. Yay. How are you, bro? How are you doing today or oh, this evening? How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. It's been a busy day. It's been a long, busy day. But, yeah, uh, you know, busy is good. Busy is good. It was a rough morning, rough few days, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and we just we move on. Yes, and I appreciate this. It's an honor to have you on the show. I know you're very busy, so just the fact that you've put aside time for me to, um, you know, to be on this podcast, to share space, uh, to share, you know, parts of your journey and and who you are and who you represent, man, it, it means a lot, bro. So I guess, you know, uh, time's ticking, so let's get straight into it. Uh, who is Jaden? If you could just do a little uh, introduction, perhaps shouting out uh, your villages or cultures. Yeah, so uh, Jaden is just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 27 years old. I'm living here in uh, Tokyo, Japan. But, uh, you know, I'm originally from, uh, well, I was born in Palmerston North and uh, moved to Hamilton at a young age from then. And then went done my schooling in uh, Auckland at Dilworth, proud Dilworthian. Um, you know, I'm Cook Island Māori, proud Cook Island Māori. Grew up a lot on my Cook Island side. Uh, especially through my grandparents on my mum's side, but uh, also I have my Maori side through my dad, and uh, my dad's Maori side there from uh, Palmerston North Wellington area as well. So you know I'm always a proud Maori as well, but uh, a very big proud Cook Islander as well. So I guess the first question I have for you uh, today is, you know, when you think back to a younger version of yourself, like what was young Jay? dreaming about um in terms of future career goals and um yeah like uh growing up you know I was just uh I was pretty much involved in a lot of things like sports academics performing arts music um you know my mum pretty much got me involved into like everything that you could not only within school but also the community and um you know growing up that was quite a big part of you know how I've come to be today so uh, I always thought you know something in sports was something um, I always enjoyed doing because I just loved hanging out with my mates but also like uh, performance arts as well because you know my grandmother she's real into dancing and music especially on my Cook Island side so I was involved in a lot of performing arts I didn't really carry on through with that mainly the sports side but um, you know here I am in Japan playing rugby so I guess kind of follow through with it Mm. you know what are some uh important values that uh when you think about the elders that you know your parents your grandparents the ones that were in your life like what are some important values that they instilled in you that have helped you to be the person that you are today um especially my mom she really uh instilled in like you know just hard work good work ethic you know she I always saw her doing a whole lot of bunch of stuff, always saw in her work hard 
And although she didn't need to put it into words, just seeing those actions kind of like, you know, always motivated me to work hard. And, but she would always tell me that, like, you know, no matter what I do, like, as long as whatever I do, it just makes me happy. Like, as long as you're doing what makes you happy and you enjoy it, you know, no matter what it is, just always believe in that mm. and just have fun while you're doing it. You know, you mentioned, uh, you know, you went to Dilworth. Uh, you are a proud Dilworth alumni, uh, former student. Have you had any opportunities to perhaps visit your old school or uh, speak to students? Or is that something that you are thinking about, you know, future wise, like maybe mentoring or something like that? Yeah, for sure. One hundred percent. When I first came over to Japan, like straight out of school, um, you know, I had a chance once to go back and help out with uh, the rugby team. But, um, you know, that was just more sports now that I'm back here. I've got kind of a big platform. I really want to go back and just, if I ever do get the chance, just to like maybe just help in like, you know, the mental state of sport. Well, not only just sport in general, just being a, just a Polynesian kid or a, a young kid growing up in NZ, you know, helping mentor them that there's mo there's opportunities outside of New Zealand as well and just mm. to kind of mentor them to look at you know the bigger picture mm. you know you've mentioned uh, already about you know your Maori culture your Cook Island culture um, and I was wondering you know when when you live abroad when you live in the diaspora uh, away from the homeland um does look like in this case you're living in Japan does it make you want to hold on more to your culture uh, and language do you know like staying connected to that or you know what do you feel about that how do you what are your thoughts on that yeah when I first came over you know I was so engaged in the Japanese culture that I kind of forgot about my own culture you know I was trying Mm -hmm. to learn the language trying to learn the Japanese culture And, um, you know, I kind of forgot about my Maori and Polynesian side when I first came over. But, you know, when I got older and uh, as time went on, um, you know, I realized the importance of, you know, my own, my my own culture, my own identity. Like I I realized that it's real important to, you know, it's all good learning these, these other cultures and languages, but never forget who you were as a person. You know, that's your culture, that's your heritage, that's your identity. And recently, you know, um, due to COVID, I can't go back home and connect, connect with my family, my cultures. But, um, you know, my mum, she's she's so uh, always getting on our backs about, you know, mm. learning the culture, learning about our family heritage. If there's family reunions, you know, try to get involved mm. and all of that. And it's always, and I've always, you know, because that's, that's who I am, you know. I live in Japan, you know, I'm, I'm a proud Kokaila Māori with a Japanese heart, but um, I'll always at first be a New Zealander, a Cook Island mm. and a Māori. You know, I was, I've was i always wondered, um, I've spe- you know, I've spoken to other, uh, you know, Kiwis that live here, Islanders, and I'm always curious about, you know, when you arrive so young, because, you know, some of uh, there are many of you who came here on scholarship to study and play rugby. What were some of the first things that you remember, like, when you first arrived in Japan, like was it was there a lot of culture shock or not so much? Yeah, it was a massive culture shock. It was like I think I came when it was like winter, and it, which just means it's summer in New Zealand. Mm. So I came over and it was just freezing cold. Like <laughs> there's winter in New Zealand, but it's not as cold as it is here. Right. <laughs> so I was, I was. That was a massive. I came here jandal shorts and yeah, I was gonna say jandals, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I came here jammed with shorts and a hoodie, walking through the airport, freezing. And I was like, God, that was, you know, that was the first massive culture shock. And then you just walk around these big buildings, bright lights, you know, different language, everything. It gets pretty overwhelming because you're trying to take it all in at once. But, you know, it is what it is. Do you, did you know much about Japan? Like, did you have to... Uh, knowing that you were going to study here and and play rugby, did you have to study, uh, do your own research back then, or were you just kind of like, let me just get on the plane, go and learn as I go? Yeah, well, actually, initially I came over to Japan as like a intermediate student on Ooh. like a exchange program between my intermediate school and an intermediate school here in Japan. 
where I stayed with a Japanese family for about a month, maybe two, three weeks, something like that. Mm. So that was my, I already had like an initial understanding of the Japanese culture, but that was more like fun. Mm. I came over here, go Disneyland, go Tokyo Tower, do all these sightseeing stuff. I didn't, I came back, when I went back, I came back as, you know, as a teenager, as an 18-year-old here on a scholarship to study, to put myself pretty much 100% into the culture. So that was, uh, and I didn't, you know, I just got, when I was in New Zealand, they just like, here's a scholarship, go over there. And I was like, man, I made it. But really, that was just the start. It was just the start <laughs> of a massive reality check. So I came over with, um, you know, I had a previous knowledge, but it didn't really help when I came back the second time. Mm. I came over a bit too, came over thinking I made it, but really. <laughs> <laughs> so it's then, a long way from there, <laughs> So then um, it's so interesting that you say that because if you could give yourself, like when you think back to 18-year-old Jay back then, if you could give yourself some advice, what would you what would you say? Oh, prepare yourself. Like not only uh, physically but mentally, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just preparation is key, especially with sports and what I do now. I really have to prepare myself, mm-hmm. you know, going into things. And so if I was a a young, if I saw a young Jaden coming in for 18 years old, I will just say, you know, prepare yourself not only physically, like, you know, but mentally as well, because you're, you, you're traveling about 11, 10 hours away from your home into mm. a country where it's just going to be you. It's just, a, you're going 360 pretty much. You're going 180 on what you initially know to what you now need to know. So just Mm. always prepare yourself, you know, physically and mentally. What kept you going? What made you, because, you know, like I'm sure with everything, being young, being in a new environment, I'm sure there were times where it was very challenging and you wanted to quit perhaps. So what what kept you motivated? Uh, What kept you going and not quit? Because sometimes people, it gets overwhelming and they're done. Mm. But you kept going. So what was it? I was just, just always, you know, my family, just always thinking back, you know, my reason why I was over here was to like, you know, uh, support myself and also support my family. Mm-hmm. And that was always a big reason, my why. Always just remember my why. Why am I here? Why am I doing it? And, you know, it was tough, you know, being away from family because, you know, I just wanted to go home after like the first month. But like, you know, tough times make tough people. So you just, you just got really, just got to, grind through that tough period and always remember your why mine was always my family Mm. and I think when people come over they've got enough confidence I had confidence in myself that you know if I was to get through this tough period that you know I could get somewhere it's just getting to that point is always a tough part so you always have to come over here with just always remember your why and just always look back on those your family like you know your your mom your dad always look back at them and just that'll always keep you going through those tough line, tough times. Mm. And another big thing was for me was my grandma is real big on faith. And I'm not someone that puts it out there and like says, you know, I'm I'm church every Sunday, I'm pray every night. That's that I, but having my grandma always say like, I'll call it, have you said your prayers? You know, did you say thank you? Did you say your grace? You know, just stuff like that helped in those those times where you just when you feel lonely or you feel tough. So mm. always was my why and my faith that just helped me get through those times. Yeah, I really like how you shared the faith element uh, of your journey because it's so true what you say. Like, um, you know, we we you move away from home, uh, no matter what age you are, we come with the understanding that our villages, our support folks our our families they're praying for us our grandparents and you know when you get caught up in life you tend to forget that but it it really that's the reality you know there are people praying for us and it's always comforting you know Mm. when you live away from home um knowing that you know so i thank you for for mentioning that because that's always for us polynesians you know pacific islanders it's always a important part of who we are and and where we come from so yeah so you know in terms of your rugby life um when you reflect on that, what are you grateful for 
uh, in terms of your experience as a rugby player here in Japan? Um, the rugby culture here is it's just giving me a group of mates. Like that's something that's really, really big because we train together like all the time, and it's not easy. It's not easy doing rugby life over here at a young age. It's not easy, but it gave me a group of mates that like you know that when we're not playing rugby, we're just hanging out, we're just chilling, we're just enjoying each other's companies. It gives you time to hang out with your mates just to forget about like. Oh man, I want to go home. Oh, I miss home. This gave me a group of mates that you know, that maybe we're in different. Like my first initial rugby teammates, maybe they're doing something else. But you know, we just maybe if we have time to catch up, it just gives me a group of mates to help ease my time here in Japan and also just have fun chilling with my mates. Mm. Um, there was a point in your uh, career where you also played Japan Sevens. Uh, what are some cool memories that you have from that experience? Oh man, that was awesome. That was one of the best things. Was year, two years, one year. You know, being a part of that that system. That's like a full on, full on pro system where mm. everything gets looked after. And um, you know, I was real grateful, real. We're grateful for that time that I had with the team. You know, we got to travel everywhere, all for free too. So mm. that's that's the best thing about it. You know, we went, I went mean, places that you know I would never have gone of if it was just me, like Sri Lanka. I would have never even gone to Sri Lanka. But if someone asked me let's go to Sri Lanka, I was like, nah. But you know, the the Japan Seven setup gave me the opportunity to go to Sri Lanka to not only play rugby but also experience the city uh, and mm. learn the culture. Dubai. Oh. I can't afford that place, but you know, <laughs> you know, we get to fly, we get to fly business class or, uh, over there for free, you know, and that's um, that was all because of the opportunities that the Japan Sevens uh, gave us. So, although it was a short time, you know, was, I'm just grateful to be part of it. Mm. It's another chapter, you know, yeah, exactly. uh, in your journey. So definitely yeah. uh, a blessing. You know, uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, the grind in terms of rugby here in Japan. You know, people don't miss about like it's 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 hardcore, right? And I was wondering about um, what you have learned about commitment and work ethic mm. uh, as a rugby player here in Japan. Yeah, I think um, you know it's it's a real tough schedule. Uh, you know, you're you're on for like maybe two weeks of the period, but then you know, you get a bit of downtime. But mm. what I definitely learned was just a lot of discipline. You know, just like little disciplines, like food eating. You know, sometimes you want to just go out and just get wild. Like there's a time and place for that. Mm. But you, I learned that like you just got to be real disciplined in what you do. Like if you really want to get into a good routine, just try to wake up like six o'clock every morning but that's not easy especially when it gets into winter mm. you just want to stay you just want to stay in bed but it's all about setting that mindset of just being disciplined of you know just just waking up and doing it just those like, little small detailed discipline times you know hard mm. work ethic you know that that's something that you should be doing on top of that but it's always just those little discipline things and i think i think all jobs do that you know not just rugby you know, I think, you know, you got like a, a lawyer that has to wake up early, like a teacher, you know, teacher, they have to wake up. Early. I think a teacher is harder than a rugby player. Mm. But, um, you know, in terms of with the what rugby taught me, it was just a little, a lot of discipline. Mm. You know, I want to uh, move into your experience uh, on The Bachelorette. And I was wondering um, if you can describe your whole experience on the show in five words how love a ride Ooh. it was uh yeah it was a right roller coaster mm. uh, draining mm. learning uh happiness and future i think you know mm. that was definitely it was yeah it was an experience i like that experience. I like that. You know, before you went on the show, were you someone that was a fan? You know, are you a fan of reality TV shows? Uh, or not really, like, have you watched reality TV shows or not really your buzz? 
Nah, like I hadn't even seen. Uh, well, I've I've heard of the Bachelor right. and Bachelorette because it, you know it's it's the world's most biggest franchise for reality mm. TV shows, but I've never actually seen it. Well, I've seen like one in New Zealand's version, <laughs> but I haven't even like seen the Japan's version before. Like I had never seen mm. it before. I had went on until mm. I learned about I was going on. You know, I was like, man, I I don't even know how how the whole show works. So mm. I better watch and figure out how it works. But yeah. before I went on, just I had no clue about it. Mm. You know, uh, how did you prepare uh, personally for the show? Like uh, mentally, like spiritually, if possible, emotionally, uh, physically, was there time to do that? Or it was just go with the flow? <laughs> Oh, for me, it was just like going with the flow because, like, um, I don't want to put on a fake self. Like, you mm. know, if I have, if I, you know, all of a sudden I'm like going out and buying these flash clothes, <laughs> that's not me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not wearing like no flash clothes. <laughs> I, I just, it's funny because I went over there like so unprepared, but I was mm. just like, you know, that's me. Like, I'm not, I don't bring like 20 pairs of shoes. Like, I just got two <laughs> shoes and that's me. But, um, you know, because, it, it kind of goes, I was just living my normal day life. And then mm. the next day I was, you know, I was overseas. I was gone. <laughs> but um, I probably should have prepared myself a little bit better in mm. terms of uh, mentally, in terms of mentally, because it is a mm. very draining journey. But um, mm. in terms of like physically or like, I wouldn't have changed anything because, mm. and that would just be putting on a fake, fake self. And that's what I mean. Hard. You know, you've mentioned it is a global uh, franchise, The Bachelorette or The Bachelor. Uh, how important was it for you, you know, on this world, this global platform, how important was it for you to represent uh, your heritage, you know, Māori, uh, being Cook Island Māori, uh, and, and also not just representation, but staying true to some of the values that you've already shared? Yeah, it was uh, big for me. I didn't really kind of understand the importance of it before I went over but, but um, you know as as the journey went on I and afterwards I kind of realized that you know you've this is kind of like an opportunity to put uh, my, my culture on on the map here in Japan you know like mm. on the show I was wearing like you know I was wearing like a lover lover like that's me <laughs> like who's this guy wearing sandals and like a party on on the show you know had a lay on, you know, I'd done a haka. I was trying to do everything mm. that I could to uh, not represent myself, not only in words, but like with, with my actions of of showing who I am. So that was really big, uh, big thing for me to do during the show and after the show now. Mm. You know, the bachelorette, uh, Ms. Miki Ozaki, she's a beautiful, successful entrepreneur, uh, business owner, CEO. You know, when you reflect on the process, uh, just the, the experience, what were some of her qualities that you really admired, um, you know, that, that you felt, man, this is, she's a potential partner for me? Yeah. Um, what was you know she, she's a real beautiful person like you know on on the outside her looks you know she's real beautiful tall you know beautiful smile and all of that but for me it was more of her her inner qualities like her inner mm -hmm. strength like she was such a strong person like mm -hmm. that journey of going through the bachelor journey it, it can't be easy for her she's doing it on her own you know mm -hmm. i had 17 guys so like you know if i had a tough day i could fall back on them but she she doesn't have that but she done the journey just with so much style and grace. And for me, that was such an attractive thing, just that inner strength as a person. And, you know, she's, she's a CEO of a, of a big makeup company. Like mm. not anyone can be a CEO, not anyone can do that. So that already displays that she has like, you know, a good work ethic, a good, you know, determination to build something up and, you know, make something of it. And, you know, with sports, it's kind of, I see it similar, like, I'm not a CEO, mm. I wish I was, no, nah. but, um, you know, we have to, to get to the final product, to get to the, to be a champion, or to be a CEO, you have to learn that process, you have to work hard to get to that point, and not anyone can do it, if it was easy, then everyone would do it, but, you know, it's not, so, to get to that point of, you know, 
being successful, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of work ethic, discipline. Mm. And um, for me, that was something else that was really attractive. Mm. Can you describe what is going through your mind when you're waiting for a rose, you know, as a contestant? What are you thinking? Are you stressed about the situation? Are you like nerves? I don't know. Or are you just kind of like whatever happens, happens? Uh, it's nerve. It's nerve wracking because you know you don't want to get sent home. Mm. But um, you know, for myself, I thought that you know during the week to get to that rose ceremony, if you'd done what you wanted to do, if mm. you'd done everything that you had to do, and you could leave there with no regrets, then you can stand there with your head high, confident that you're going to get the rose. If you don't, then you don't. You know, but you, I always wanted to leave each ceremony each mm. week or each whatever it was with no regrets and if mm. so I could stand there if I was to get a rose you know I had confidence that I was going to get a rose but if I didn't you know I could leave there with no regrets I could leave there with my head held high and saying that up until that point I'd done everything that I needed to do that mm. I wanted to do that I wanted to say to get to there and if I wasn't meant to be you know I wasn't meant to be that that's that is that's what it is that's that's fate that's how it works but you know, you can only control the things that you can do. Giving the mm. roses up, that's what she can control. You can't control her. You can only do what you can control. Mm. So for me, it was if I'd done everything that I wanted to do, say that I wanted to say, then, you know, I had I could stand there with the confidence that I was going to get the rose. If I didn't, mm. then, you know, it is, it is what it is. You know, at what point did you start did you realize, oh, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really feeling some kind of way? You know, can you remember the exact point or is it something that gradually uh, happens on the show? Yeah, it just, it just gradually happens. Like, um, mm. for me, it was when I started opening up about conversations that I don't have normally. Mm. You know, that was something for me because, like, you know, I only have those conversations with certain people. And I have to feel a bit of a bit of sense of security, a sense of comfort for me to be able to speak about those things that I don't really speak about. And you know, when I was sitting there with her, at times, um, for example, on our dog date at the poolside, mm. you know, that was something big for me because you know I could talk about you know stuff that I've never talked about before with anyone, and that was because you know I just felt safe in the moment, a bit of sense of security mm. and uh, a bit of comfort for me, from her, for me to be able to open up about it. And that's when I started feeling like, oh, wow, you know, maybe I do have feelings for this girl. So that was mm. a big thing for me, yeah. And how difficult was it for you to keep your emotions in check? Because it's one thing, you know, you've already said, you know, you – you there are things that you want to say you need to get out you you know you're having these real intimate moments building trust in one another so how difficult or challenging was it for you to kind of like not get overwhelmed with emotion uh, or get caught up in the moment but just to really express yourself in a way that is you doing it the best way that you can do do you know yeah 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 it was um it was it was tough because like um you know sometimes you just sit there and you just you're frustrated or mm. you're a bit down or you're a bit scared but uh, I think for me a big reason for me being on the journey was to to learn about these emotions you know mm. and for me to open up to be able to talk about these emotions you know as a Polynesian rugby player I think it's quite quite difficult for for us to talk about those emo emotions not only just about love but just emotions in general mm. like how do you feel people say good but you know maybe are you really actually just good you know there's more deeper meaning mm. to good and um on the journey like it kind of told me that like you know these emotions there are it's okay it's okay to have these emotions it's okay to be scared it's okay to be you know sad it's okay to be frustrated it's just how do you react to when you get these emotions? Mm. And I think a big thing for me was to learning how to just, just open up about it, 
not only to her, but like, you know, maybe to the other guys in the journey or, mm. you know, just learning about how we, how to control, not control these emotions, but open up these emotions to say that, you know, it's okay. It's okay to be, it's okay to be, you know, sad. It's don't try and just bottle it all up. Just mm. let it out in some way because you don't want it to bottle up because it could, you know, you just, if you go home with bottled up emotions, you know, you leave with mm. regrets. So something for me was just to learn about these emotions, learn that process and, um, you know, to try to trust that process. Mm. That was something big for me. You know, I've watched uh, interviews, I've read articles, you know, because I, of course, I had to do my research, even though I know <laughs> you, I was like, don't be that guy who rocks up and doesn't do the research. But, you know, I, I watched a few interviews, read articles that were written about you and you, you uh, constantly talk about this journey. You talk about it being an experience, really s- forcing you uh, to step out of your comfort zone. Mm. And, and you know, you, you, you're a pretty confident guy. So, when you talk about that stepping out of your comfort zone, was it more um, letting yourself be vulnerable mm. to the learning experience? You know, was it, uh, I think you've already alluded to it, you know, like letting your guard down and just capturing those real intimate moments. Let me stop. Please answer. <laughs> no, yeah. no, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, you, you know me on a personal level, you know, I'm a real confident out there kind of guy. But um, mm. I think, what I learned was that that was kind of like, you know, I, I kind of use it as a mask so that we don't have to get to a deeper point. And they're like, mm. oh, there's this guy, he's confident, he probably talks about everything. Mm. But I, I think something for me, you know, especially when I was younger, um, that, uh, you know, I was this big, confident, out there kind of guy, but I use that to kind of mask so that you didn't have to get deeper into those conversations. You didn't have to get deeper into those feelings. And mm. I think something for me was to, you know, Still be that confident guy, but take away that wall, take away that wall so that and letting people into that wall, not just, you know, your close ones, but, you know, sharing it out Mm. with people and sharing that burden of like, you know, feeling homesick or, you know, sharing that burden of like, you know, just today wasn't a good day. Mm -hmm. Um, I think something for me was just to let someone in and, you know, let them know me on a more intimate, personal level. Mm. And, um, you know, being vulnerable was something that I was so terrified of. You know, being scared. You know, I, I said this multiple times, you know, I'm just scared. This whole thing's just scary. But, like, you know, people think, like, saying scared, oh, this guy's a little chicken or something like that. Mm. But it takes someone of massive bravery to say they're yeah. scared. Someone that says they're scared, someone that says that, uh, you know, they're vulnerable that's someone that's like stronger than anyone else. So something for me was just being able to just to let that wall down, let that guard down and just be vulnerable and just open myself up so that I can learn Mm -hmm. more about myself on this journey. And I think you create a better connection with her and with the other guys and with everyone involved in the journey. So, yeah. Mm. Do you think that has the show then changed your idea or your perception of what love is and what love sounds and sounds mm. like should look like should be yes yeah, definitely told me that there's uh that there's a process mm. that there's there's a process to you know finding the right one falling in love there's definitely a big process and um i think it's important to learn that process and then once you learn that process to trust that process and um i think getting to that trust point is a very as it'll it'll take time but um and it's a tough well when you know you know Hmm. but i think there's a process that you really learn you have to learn how to trust it all and it's definitely opened up myself for me i thought you know that i also have to open up myself that you have to create a bigger connection a bigger bond Hmm. Uh, other than just you know physical or spirit you have to create a more spiritually bond spiritual Mm. bond like more mental bond create a connection and I think something for me is uh, that I was able to learn firstly about myself and how I can 
use myself in that new way to learn the process of love mm. and to trust that process because it's definitely a journey. Yeah, you know, it was interesting, eh, when I was watching the snippets, uh, watching videos, I was on YouTube researching, uh, reading uh, interviews, watching videos about your journey, and it really was interesting to see this side of you, because mm. I think for, you know, Tokyo Indonesian family, you know, we all laugh and have good times, you know, it's, you know, Ainga, Fano, all of that, but it was really, you could, uh, from what I could see, like, vulnerability and just the willingness to be vulnerable. Like mm. you said, you know, I think it really did take a lot of courage for you to start on that journey. And I think that there are many people who would probably talk about it and not go through with it. And to see that you you did that, like you, you it, it was this experience where you were able to grow um, and, you know, you know, find a bit of um, maybe a part of yourself that you didn't actually know. Yeah, was there, sure. you know, so it was for really sure. cool sure. to just see like uh, interviews and things like that. And I was like, bro, this guy over here, <laughs> we were all like in his feels. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, we all laugh and we all, you know, fam, we all, nah, times. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Everyone was like, well, this guy, you know, but you know, it was just, you know, mm. Well, I wouldn't say it's a, it's 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 a difference. It's just the other side of you know. Yeah, like, and and then oh. I think that's so courageous of you because not everyone, uh, knowing that it's it's a it's a show like it's it's an actual show and to yeah. be able to let your guard down and say you know what this is something that I want to learn about. I want to you know it's part of being a young person. You know, finding yeah. out what 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 you really want and. And whatnot, like I was just like, bro, I'm, I'm so proud. Look at our little brother go. Oh my god, yeah. he's all going up. It was cool, bro. It, it really was. Like I really admire you for, um, just being open to going on this journey. Because for us to see it and go, oh, bro, this guy hiding his feelings like this, like yeah. <laughs> that's really I know cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. I definitely learned so much more about myself and a different and the mm. other side of. Jay and um, I think it was just more of an opportunity for me to introduce that side to yes. everyone and instead of like me putting it in the words and walking around and saying it just yeah. a chance for everyone just to see it in person and make their own judgment of what it is hard out man you know what was really cool was watching the show and the, I mean we all know you're like so undercover but really fluent in Japanese but man it was so cool to see you um them allowing you to have Japanese and English. Tell yeah, us a yeah, little bit sure. about that, um, especially when it comes to expressing emotion during those intimate mm. moments. Like, were you torn between I should use English or I should use Japanese? Like, what was that like? Yeah, um, I think the like you know I always wanted to make the effort to speak Japanese mm. uh, to her because that's her mother tongue. Yeah. But I knew that she um, could speak English. Mm. She was fluent in English. She could speak English really well. But I knew that the importance of uh, making the effort for her to communicate in Japanese was big. But when it comes to talking about emotions mm. and feelings, you know, if I if I try to say it in Japanese, I would probably have to learn what I was going to say and then say it to her. And that kind of would be, wouldn't be fake, but it would be mm. just like it might be just a little bit half-hearted. Mm. So I knew the if I was really wanting to convey something, if I was really wanting to portray something, uh, and my mother tongue in English would have a, a better meaning because mm. every word that I say in English would be real. You know, it, it wouldn't be rehearsed, it wouldn't be recited. You know, it'd just be speaking from my heart, and it'd just be coming out. Mm. So being being able to use both. English and Japanese was uh was you know grateful that she could speak English, and um, conveying my feelings in English just meant that it it gave greater meaning a deeper meaning, because you know when you when you want to convey something you know you have to say it real, and saying it in English meant that you know it was just speaking from the heart nothing was rehearsed, mm. trying to learn it in Japanese then say it then you know it's a little it's not mm. fake but it's just a little half hearted. Hard out, you know. Now that you've been on the Bachelorette, you've been on reality TV show. Are you 
perhaps uh, curious about uh, Japanese TV or the entertainment industry here? Are you looking for opportunities? Because you're uh, multilingual, you speak you know, a number of languages. Um, is that something in the horizon? on the horizon <laughs> yeah for sure for sure i definitely want to get involved more in the media and the tv world mm. uh being on that side of the world and experience it for the first ever time uh it was it was it was so much fun it was so much mm. fun you know i love being behind the camera oh no in front of the camera sorry i love mm. being in front of the camera you know that was good fun and then the opportunities that's provided from there just like you know model shoots or little interviews with magazines or tv shows you know, I really enjoy that whole experience as well. And um, going forward, you know, that opportunity has not come fully yet. But, you know, I hope that um, I can continue in this this TV world and this media world where, you know, whether it be like, you know, I don't know, one actor or uh, TV shows, hosts, announcers or something, mm. commentary or something like that, I definitely would love to continue exploring into this side of the industry that because I've ne known nothing I know there's a process to learning it and you know I want to do it justice by learning the all about that world but mm. I definitely going forward I would love to get more involved and in, and in photo sh photo shoot stuff or tv stuff media stuff would love to get more involved in that you know you have a, a huge following now uh you know a lot of followers and fans um are you still the same, Jay, just with a really different type of mindset? Uh, you know, is there, you, I know you've mentioned throughout the interview, like, you know, the importance of being true to who you are, being true to your values. And, you know, I was wondering, uh, with, with just with the exposure now, is it challenging to kind of balance that online offline uh, uh, platform or per, uh, public image do you know yeah it's, it's 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 pretty it's new it's all new to me it went from like you know zero followers to like oh crazy amount of followers now mm. you know you walk the streets and you know people want to have photos of you they know who you are you go to the supermarket you're waiting for the train something like that it, it's it's so full-on but mm. you know I'm without without the fans, without those people supporting me, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm. I wouldn't be where I am going forward. And so I kind of owe a duty to them mm. to uh, to let them have a little insight of, you know, who I am, what I'm doing, you know, because without them, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to be carrying on. So it's, it's kind of finding a balance of, you know, showing them what's okay and what's not okay. Mm. What's, you know, I get requests for so much stuff but, you know, I, I don't want to endorse something that I don't believe in. I don't want to do right. something that I don't believe in because, you know, the the, the followers, the fans, the people that mm. support me, you know, they're so loyal. They're so loyal. Mm. You know, if I say this, they will do it, you know, and I'm so grateful for them because, but I don't want to endorse something. I don't want to promote something. I don't want to do something that I don't believe in for them mm. to, to be influenced by. So I think it's, it's trying to find a good balance to mm. provide that kind of duty for them because I owe it to them, you mm. know, at a certain level, I owe it to them to let, have a little insight of, you know, what I do day to day, how I'm feeling, because that's how I was on the show. Mm. And I kind of will still want to keep on building on that for me personally as well, you know, getting out there, you know, saying how I feel. If I woke up feeling bad, you know, I want to say that, you know, Good morning. I want to say good morning every day to everyone and say, you know, just have a good day, smile, let's create some good energy. It's kind of finding a good balance of trying to provide stuff for them. But mm. also, you know, there's a personal side that I want to keep personal as well. Mm. I don't want to expose everything. I don't want to give away everything. You know, I want to keep some personal stuff to myself as well. So mm. it's finding a good balance, but I definitely owe it as a duty for the supporters and for the fans to um, allow them to continue being a part of my journey after the show. Mm. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because it, it leads on to my next question about uh, mental health and 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 well being. Like, how do you uh, look after yourself? You know, how do you do? You find that you need to disconnect uh, sometimes and just do things that you uh, 
you love, like hobbies and things like that? Yeah, definitely. It gets full on. Like, um, I think it's really important to to find, you know, something personal within what you do. Like for myself, recently I've, you know, mm. started waking up like six six in the morning and just just going for a walk. Mm. You know, that that's my time. That's my time. Or you know, go to sleep before you go to sleep. You know, just shut everything off and just lay there for ten minutes. Um, reading. Love reading now. Drawing, a bit of art. Love doing doing a bit of art, mm. and um, just finding times during the day for yourself to just reflect on, reflect on going forward, reflect on yourself, mm. and also for me is um, connecting back to my family and NZ because to them I'm still I'm still Jay. I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a little cheeky Jay over yeah. here. You know I might be everyone might know me, but. You know, I go back to my fam. I go back to my mum. She's still gonna pull my ears. If yeah, she will like, like... <laughs> <laughs> so definitely put me in check if I ever need it. So it's always just like you know, finding a little escape, a little mm. time. We go have a little getaway or something like that. For that, for me, it's it's really important because it's full on when you come. I knew it was gonna be like this. Mm. I didn't just didn't think it was gonna be as big is what it is right now where mm. where you can't really walk around anymore you can't I'm um, like hat hoodie mask glasses look like some drug dealer or something like that but you know that's how you have to <laughs> yeah, that's how it is yeah <laughs> being chased in the airport you're yeah, that guy yeah, huh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that dodgy guy that's taking off. That's just me, guys. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, that is crack up. But, yeah, I mean, it makes so much sense here because I don't think, you know, it's interesting when you, um, you know, when you're really paying respects to your followers, uh, the people that love what you do and they're, they're there to support you because fandoms and things like that, are like fan clubs, it's a real thing here in Japan and people – you know that the people do it respectfully. You know, like yeah, they they yeah, really yeah. go out of their way to show that they do appreciate you. So I think it's important, uh, you know, to to point that out. But I was, you know, naturally as a rugby player, as an athlete, a public figure, like you uh, can be looked at as a leader, a mentor, uh, someone who inspires other. But I was wondering for for you or other people, uh, but for you, who are some of your mentors? Who are some of the people that uh, that you look up to uh, for advice, um, you know? Oh, uh, the biggest person there is always, you know, I always look for advice in anything that I do. It's always, it's always my mum. Mm. My mum is, um, she's, well, she, she's kind of like my best friend. Like, she's like, I always call her my G. Mm. And, um, you know, my mum, she always gives, the best advice in the right moment. And, um, you know, even with her actions, like she's a, she works in the community, you know, she does a lot, not only for me and my brother, but also our extended family, you know, and also her community. Mm. And that's something that's big for me now that I learned that, you know, I have like a community, the bachelorette community that, you know, I also have to look after. And then I have my own family that I have to look mm. after. And my mum, she does so much, not with her words, but with her actions. And for some, for her, her has always been a massive inspiration and something that always motivates me to just be a good person mm. and um, lead with the actions and people will follow. And um, always remembering who you are, your identity, your culture. And uh, mm. she's always been massive inspiration and someone that I look up to forever. She's gone through hard times, but you 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 wouldn't know it because, you know, she does everything with a smile and mm. um, she's still there to help everyone when needed and lead when needed. So that's something that I've always, like, looked up to is no matter what, do it with a smile. Mm. You know, you mentioned that you you like to read now. You know, do it while well, you have time to do a bit more reading. Uh, so I was wondering if you have a book recommendation or maybe something that has inspired you lately. Or 
Uh, so yeah, while I was on the journey, I actually had time to read a lot of books. Mm. So um, I, I, I'm really into, uh, you call it autobiographies, books oh, about yeah, people. Yeah. yeah. And um, one book, uh, well, I actually read three books over there. I read um, Trevor Noah's book. Trevor oh, Noah, yeah. He's that the man. That was awesome, yep. But also I also read uh, Stephen Adams, Ooh. Stephen Adams' book. That was a really good book. I really loved that book. Mm. And then the last book, um, I think I think you might know him and his partner, uh, Ensign Inouye's book. I actually messaged him personally because I was looking for it before I left overseas. Oh. To, um, I was actually looking for his hard copy book in Japan, but they didn't. Well, they sold it, but it was going to take two and a half weeks or three weeks to get mm. to me, and I was leaving in a week. So I messaged him personally. I was like, "Hey, bro, do you have do you sell your hard copy books anywhere in Japan where I can go pick it up?" And he was like, send me your address. And I was like, oh, okay. And, uh, he, was like, and he sent me, he actually sent me his, his book personally signed as well. Oh my and, God, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so I read his book over there. And that was that was an interesting story into how he has become who he is and where he is. So that was my latest yeah. autobiography that I've read. Oi, so. that's so cool. Shout, shout out to Ensign. Shout out to Ensign. And yeah. Sarah. Oh, oh man, yeah, yeah, shout yeah. out to the fam. That's so cool. I'm very yeah. that is. I need to read that, eh? Like I Oh yeah, it's intense. It's, so it's intense. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, oh. real real grateful that uh he sent that to me personally and signed as well. So shout out to the I'm bro. jealous. Remind right, I'm calling Sarah right after <laughs> Like right after bumping? this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, before I forget, also just shout out a huge love and shout out to Jaden's mom. I know she's traveled to Japan, you know, prior to COVID, she's been over here, always coming over to support Jaden. So, you know, it's it's important to, uh, you know, shout her out. Uh, you mentioned it just before, so shout out to Jaden's mom, shout out to your mom. <laughs> so, you know, as we <laughs> as we begin to wrap up the show, um future i'm sure you've got a lot of goals and and dreams that you're still you know goals that you're still chasing uh can you share if possible anything that you're um working towards or uh, aspiring to do i don't i don't know yeah well before the year before the year ends um you know i'm working on so many projects at the moment but um you know just um uh current runs is you know i've got two uh how would you say it in English? Shokujukai, where you just, where we, well, I'm going to eat with a couple, with, well, I thought it was only going to be a couple, but mm. we, yeah, we had about 358 people do bookings. Oi! When we're oh, in, like, a, like a fan meeting thing where you're like, like sharing, fan like meeting having where dinner and, and. We were just having dinner, yeah, just having Oi, like a three cool, hour bro. course. Yeah, so yeah, we've got uh, two two uh, meet and greets coming up uh, at the start of December. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also working on uh, a new sweat, uh, mm. up new sweat, uh, track, track suit yeah. uh, set up coming out soon. Okay. Uh, mainly aimed at uh, kids, kids yeah. and uh, families where you have like a mix, matching uh, sweat fit up so that'll be coming out hopefully by the end of this month start of next month okay and uh oh so next year we go next year i'm coming in hot man i'm coming in so hot next year i'm just gonna take some time to break away coming back a couple of tv stuff some involved in sports stuff you know i'm trying to i'm trying to build be bigger than what it is and you know just getting involved in anything and everything. So um, definitely exciting times ahead. That's that's so cool, bro. I'm glad um, you know, that we got we were able to uh like sit down and do this before you blow. I mean, you've blown up already, but even more like, you know, like world domination. Okay, I'm just being dramatic, <laughs> but <laughs> bit dramatic. But you know, it's so cool. It's really honestly, man, it's so exciting to hear. Uh, just the different things, uh, projects, collab, all of that, you know, merch uh, dropping and all that. It's so cool to know that you're really um, looking at branding, you're really building your platform um, with a growth mindset. You know, that is super, super important. And, 
yeah, man, like the world is your oyster. This it's a big, big, wide world out there, and you know, as long as you stay true to who you are, man, you're gonna be amazing. And as long as you remember your family, your mom, and you know those that came before you, your villagers, and your support team. You can't go wrong, do you know? <laughs> no, no. I'm definitely, you know, excited and, you know, I'm definitely grateful for, for you inviting me onto, onto your podcast as well, you know. I see what you're doing, you know, definitely <laughs> someone like you, especially in Japan and the Polynesian community, it's definitely something to look up to as, you know, as I'm trying to build my own brand and as I'm trying to go forward. And, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be on this podcast if, you know, if I, if I didn't love what I was, what, what you've been doing, what, you know, that what I see you do is like it's something different outside of you know this whole this whole world and for me something you know personally on a personal level you know I love seeing what you're doing I love seeing how you involve yourself in the Japanese culture but also your Samoan culture and also the Maori culture yeah. and so you know I want to say thank you for inviting me onto your your podcast and you know I appreciate the support bro like it's so it's so interesting because as I've listened to you talk during the podcast. It really is growth, man. Like, you know, just growth mindset. Um, I'm not saying you were immature before, but <laughs> just more like just it's it's so <laughs> actual. <laughs> but it's so cool to like hear, like, man, you know, you're nah, ready yeah, to just, sure. just sure. to smash those goals. And just, you know, we, you know, everyone here, we just want to keep encouraging you to keep doing that. So, um, you know, as, as we do wrap up the show, uh, again, thank you, bro. We, we we got you. We're still watching you, uh, supporting you from from here. And uh, final words: you've dropped so many important gems throughout the show. So, final words of encouragement, just to kind of wrap us up. Um, yeah. Final words, Wolf. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, just no matter what you do, just always be happy in what you do. Always believe your my your why. Always have faith in it. Always know that there's a process to learn that mm. process, and to trust that process. And you know, if, if it was easy, then you know everyone would do it. But um, you know, always work hard for whatever you got. It doesn't have to be a rugby. It doesn't have to be in TV. It can be any anything you want to be, as long as you have the discipline and the work ethic to be able to get there and overall just be happy doing it because you want to always do what whatever makes you happy i think that's always important 